Well, <clears throat> should we uh, should we stop down and talk about what we're doing here? We're we're on uh, uh, we're not all together in the same place. And we're going to have to do some episodes like this every now and then because yeah, yes, and we can just, always blame never... somebody, right? Like this, this is somebody's fault. <laughs> this so who, who are we going to blame? Okay, we can blame. We can blame a little bit of Glenn. We can blame a little bit of Megan. Why can we? How can we blame <laughs> Megan? The office It'd isn't ready. I don't we know. We have a new, we're, we're moving to a new office. Well. Yes, that is true. We're moving into a new studio and it is not ready, which might be the reason we have to do another one of these maybe, but I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, maybe we'll do another one at Rob's house because that was pretty nice too. But Glenn, you're in, in Texas. And Glenn's in Texas, yeah. But to be fair to Megan, Glenn, it, it was really Glenn's fault because Megan has been working tirelessly to get us from one building to another and it, it's actually going to happen rather quickly. So really, Glenn, this is all your fault. Yeah. 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 That's uh, I'd say I'd say that's accurate because <laughs> you wanted to support your wife so bad. Yeah, this is what I get for supporting my wife. I'm, I'm out here in South by Southwest uh, in Austin. And, uh, you know, it's uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to uh, South by Southwest, but uh, the whole town is just a, a big party. Uh, I've, it was I've, crazy. I've been Last to Austin several times and I always enjoy going to Austin, but I've not, I've been to so few like festivals and things. And I think it would be so fun. Been to just it a is fun. Smattering. Yeah. Jill's movie premieres tonight. So um, that'll be, that'll be interesting. That'll be fun. Exciting. But yes, this is, this is my fault. This is my fault. I appreciate you taking responsibility <laughs> for that, Glenn. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah. Although I guess no you could also say it was, you know, I'll take some responsibility or some blame because normally we do it during the week and I'm un unavailable this week. So maybe it's actually my fault. Oh, so it would have happened mm -hmm. anyway. Would have would have been this way anyway. I I suppose I'm also uh, I also have to take some blame because I I you know I'm the one who's always insisting that uh, you know we we find an office that's sort of equidistant mm. between the three of us. Um, so you know the fact that we even had to move offices. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to throw my hat in the ring. It's not really my fault. <laughs> Should we talk about this episode? Yeah. Well, I watched it with my son. Yeah. yeah let's... Uh, okay. Oh my God. How was that experience? Well, yeah. Um, we've been trying to dip our toes into a little bit. He's turning 12 and we started dipping our toes into you know, letting, allowing him to watch some of the episodes. And we thought, again, having no memory of it whatsoever, we thought maybe this one might be a fun one to get into. And there are aspects of the story that are, but then this is really where we establish Dennis as a sexual predator in in some capacity. Um, <laughs> there's, there's some of that for sure. This, to me, I'm like, oh, we don't yet know what the show is and we're looking for it. Yeah. Like there's some for sure, yeah. Super cartoonish elements of the story, which I did not enjoy watching no. personally. Yeah, no, we pushed we we pushed it on this one real far, and I remember us talking about this actually when we were writing it too. I, I remember when we were working on this episode, we were like, "This is really insane!" Like what we're doing here, and I think you know because we it was the first time we we had to do 15 episodes, which I think was pretty f overwhelming to us at the time. Uh, well, hell, it, we, that would be overwhelming to me now. Um, we, I don't think we had time to really second guess ourselves. I think we just had to press on and, and make the best of it uh, that we could. And I would actually argue that for as cartoonish as it is, it did make me laugh. Uh, I, I was laughing a lot, um, but it is ridiculous. I mean, we go from just, you know, bar owners and you guys are going clothing shopping to like running a full on sweatshop by the end where you have a steam whistle you know, and uh, and we've hired a bunch of uh, Eastern European uh, knockwurst smelling women to 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 sew clothes for us. I mean, it's 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 but that absurd. opening yeah, scene. I, did, like, it's I, I would do, I, lo, I, there was the opening scene was so it. the opening scene is so great, and I remember yeah, yeah, so yeah, distinctly. Yeah, 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 first yeah. of all, Judy Greer, who's fantastic, yeah. and we knew her from Arrested Development, right? That's where we knew her from, and yeah. um and so. I remember on that day that was not scripted that Charlie <laughs> Charlie has all the hats and all the clothes on and he didn't tell anybody he was he was doing it. I, I distinctly remember and it was a reveal. And so <laughs> D, D, 
D walks well, that- over and the camera just pans over. Charlie's full on laughing or at least smiling. I remember being behind the monitors <laughs> yeah, and laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he's yeah. got a big, that's one I'm sure I was just doing for you guys yeah. being like, yeah. all right, let, let, let me see if I can <laughs> throw them off here. <laughs> and uh, the, it's the, sta- it's the stack of hats and the, fa- the stack of hats <laughs> and the fact that you found a hoodie that could actually yeah, go yeah. over. The stack of hats. <laughs> Most hoodies wouldn't. Most hoodies wouldn't go over that many hats. I don't know who, really who this character is, but he's in my mind from somewhere in my childhood. But like, do you remember the great Gazoo? He was like a cartoon character, kind of like the Martian in Warner Brothers, Big Bunnies thing. But like, I don't know, some big brain, like alien guy. And uh, I, I was going for a great Gazoo look. <laughs> Well, I I, de- I definitely remember being in a store and and early on and even still to this day, but certainly early on, we would barely be able to afford to shoot to shut a store. We, we definitely couldn't shut a, a store down. So the store would be like, OK, we're, you guys can shoot here, but we're going to keep it open. And then it would just be like rando people walking in and be like, what's going on in the middle of a take? And we'd be like, we're making a show. <laughs> and, and, and that's cause that's all yeah, we could totally. afford. And so we would be kind of like huddled up in the side of a, of a, of a clothing store and people would just be walking by just doing, just shopping, going about their day. I think we just didn't have any money and th- everybody was just doing the best they could. Like locations was like, how much is my budget? Oh, okay. Well they walk in, they're like, I'll give you 50 bucks to let us shoot here. And the owners are like, sure, we're, but we're staying open. Yeah, 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 and they're like, I don't think the guys that get in there are like this isn't one of those shows where that matters, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. It really the production value on that. Have you seen this show? It looks like shit. It, it does not matter. There will be people looking directly into the camera. Like that's fine. The guys don't really care about that. I have found that that is often a thing. You go around and you're scouting locations, and they'll, they'll like, okay, it's one, it's one price to buy the whole thing out, which is usually pretty expensive. It's another price to shoot in here, but we're staying open. But you got to kind of stay out of our workspace. You got to like find a corner to shoot in. And I think we did a lot of option B deals, uh, and probably still do. You know, uh, but yeah, the, but but anyway. So the this the the Dennis character. I mean, you're so funny in this, Glenn. Like the and and it starts the peak. It starts with you haven't begun the peak yet, which that's endured. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see I can see myself as a as an actor. And I do remember and I think we have talked about this, but like I do remember that season three re- really was the year where I feel like I found the character. I mean, it took I mean, not that it wasn't there before, but like I really felt like I was as an actor, just sort of like letting myself be a little bit more insane and crazy and unhinged and just weird, just making weird choices and just kind of doing whatever I thought was, was funny. Um, and taking a risk that other people would find it funny too. But, um, uh, I, I can see that also in this episode, Rob, like I, I, I can see myself like just trying on, like, ju- let's just see how despicable and egotistical and awful and narcissistic and predatory can we make this character and still have it be funny? It's just like, how far can I push this guy? And you do see a lot of that um, in, in the episode. And ironically, that is it that you, you're starting to see really who the character becomes, who, who he really became. Well, you went on a, on we a run on. on, and I, I feel like I can't remember specifically, but I think we probably had some debate over whether or not we could do this for your character or in general, but you have the funny run of like, Words like no or stop or don't have never yeah. worked on me. And I feel like I remember, uh, I remember so, like some debate about it, but I don't, I don't remember. Like if you, you might've been uncomfortable with it. We definitely, or, were, we, we, or we definitely we were like, all were, but we kept, I remember just kept saying, yes, but if we're going to do the thing, let's do the thing. So if we're going to, if we're going to suggest that these are the worst people on the planet and that's the joke, then let's just go all the way into it. And how can we do that in every, in every which way? Yeah, it's it's uh, I I remember that too, Charlie. As a matter of fact, I it'd be interesting to maybe go back and try and find the original shooting script of that, because I think a lot of that stuff maybe wasn't even in the script. I think that was stuff that we were like messing around with on the day. I feel like it was. Uh, and yeah, I think there was a lot of improv happening there um, uh, uh, around the, that section. Um <laughs> And I remember us, I, I, I remember us like laughing a lot, but also thinking like, 
also all of us being very uncomfortable, but in a way that we were like, I think it's, I think we should push through this discomfort because it is making us laugh and we are portraying this awful, awful human being, you know, and a certain mentality that again, this is what our show is. That is a mentality that really does exist. You know what I mean? It's like this misconception of what it means to be a confident winner. It's so despicable to us. The, th- the three of us and all of us as, as people that it was well it was but then, a but then we have to... we have judy's character a saying over and over and including that in, in that one scene with the model and then um with ingrid nelson where they're straight up saying you are a bad person you are a piece of shit like the and and that's and they're the mirror to the audience right the audience is looking at that and saying oh yes the show is recognizing that this behavior is terrible. And my 11 year old is watching it and he's, and he's like, Dennis is insane. Right. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, he's, he's the bad guy in the story. And I'm like, yes. Okay. So the 12 year old gets it. That's a good sign. I, can I speak for all women? Why I think it works, at least for me, why I, why I like it. It's the common, like it's the combination of that um, rant about words like no and stop and the winners thing. And also Dennis's obsession with the body shape of this woman. And it all comes from a place for me of feeling like someone in his past, maybe his parents, maybe his coaches, someone fed him these like messages about what what is good and what it takes mm-hmm. to succeed. And that is what he's like regurgitating. And so to me, like the whole thing as a whole works almost as like being about toxic masculinity and the way that like it's ingrained as as you cannot fail in this thing. This woman can't reject you. And also having Judy there to be like, I see an, a woman, an uncomfortable, confused <laughs> woman stuffed into a dress. Like that is it's always really about funny. some kind of mania <laughs> with us. Like I, I feel like we really stumbled on like, okay, if these characters are borderline maniacal with with their insecurities, really. You know, uh, then it, it starts to become funny. But I don't know, that's what it is. Yeah, he kicked down. He kicked, he kicked a door. down a door. We just he kept doubling down, down and doubling down <laughs> and doubling up. down. Is that when we started the kicking in door jokes? Because that that jo- we we did a bunch of kicking yeah. in doors, where we're like, you kicked it in, and we reveal it was kicked in. Have you guys ever kicked in a door? We had a door in in Brooklyn that we had to kick in one time. It was surprisingly easy. What do you mean? What, what, what do you mean? You you actually kicked in a door? Is that what you're saying? Yes, our door to our my door to my our apartment. We got locked out of it, and we kept calling the the building manager, and he wasn't around. And we were like, "There's no way to get into this door." So, and I think somebody tried to like jump into it, and that doesn't work because it hurts your shoulder. But if you just back up and kick that fu- kick the door at the hinge, what happens? It doesn't break the lock. It just breaks the door hinge rather easily. Oh. Now, again, I, this is probably like a, pre, I don't know when this building was built. It was a piece of shit. So I'm sure doors are much more reinforced now, but it was surprisingly easy. Oh, that's kind of, that's kind of fun. Well, yeah, I mean, we do, we do try to kick in the door, uh, marked private Yeah, <clears throat> in the, uh, the Korea episode. It's got a battering <laughs> ram up. me yeah. into it. We also, uh, we also, ba- <laughs> uh, uh, we actually do battering ram a door open in season five in um the episode where we're the mortgage crisis episode we we use an actual battering ram <laughs> just bash yeah. through that door do you guys remember that i was gonna say i had a buddy in college uh we were at this um we were at like someone's house party and, and there was a big snowstorm and uh this was pre-cell phones right so he had left the party he comes back like hours later the party's like guys bad news man somebody broke into our apartment um, but I like, I got home right when the guy had broken in and, and he like scrambled out, uh, the window or something. And we're like, Oh shit. And you saw the door was all kicked in and everything. And we're like, man, oh, glad you got here in time. Um, then, you know, it's like late at night and I kind of was still up and, and the buddy who saw the guy had gone to sleep and I start thinking about a story, <laughs> thinking about it. I'm like, <laughs> and I go and I gra- grab this dude's shoe. And it perfectly matches the shoe print <laughs> in the door. And what had happened was he was just so hammered and he lost his key that he that that he kicked the door in and came up with a whole <laughs> crazy story instead of just being like instead of going all the way back to the party in the snowstorm and getting someone else's key. But we busted him on it. He had to fix the door. <clears throat> Wow. So you guys have uh, both have kicking in doors stories. I don't I don't have any kicking in doors. That's probably good. That's probably good. Kicking a door. 
Don't want to have to kick it. I always thought it would be. It always sounded fun to me, though. It's one of those things like ah, that. That sounds, you know, there's like a handful of things that always sounded kind of interesting to me that I always wanted to test the theory of. Like when I was a kid, I was always like, yeah, you know, like kicking a door down. Like what? How? Why don't hard we do this? Th- Why don't we in our new studio? We just commit to whatever the cost is to repair a door. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we just give you your dream, buddy. This is Hollywood. We, you know, like you can do whatever you want. We'll, you let's lock a door. door. Let's find a door that you can kick in and we'll yeah. put it on the podcast. And, and you can talk about your experience of kicking the door in and how you felt, how you felt before, how it changed you. I think. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. let me throw this out there because I've got a list of things. Uh, you know, it's not just the door. There's, there's like that you a want to kick in. Of, no, 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 no. A whole a list, list of things, things you want to do. <clears throat> things that I've that I've always seen that I saw in movies a lot as a kid that I always wanted to, uh, you know, check out. Like one of them's kicking in a door. Now that's an easy one to set up. Uh, this next one I'm about okay. to name is is, is uh, would not be so easy. Uh, kick. But by the way, we should do that uh, because I really would like to do that. It means a lot to me that you would spend the money on a door. Or at least, you know, Do split, you. split, split it. You know, we'll split it. <laughs> yeah. We'll split the door. Yeah, we'll split it. depends on the door, right? If it's like one of those, like, you know, like within a building from one room to another, sure. But if we're talking about from the outside of a building into a building, those are tough doors. I think to we start in. with an inside I, door. Yeah. Okay. Well, Glenn, what else is on that list, Glenn? Let's see if we can get like a checklist of things that Glenn's always wanted to do, and then we can do them. We can, we can create yeah. and provide the environment for you to achieve your dreams. Okay. Well, I don't know that we could do this next one, but I've always wanted to know what it was like to actually sink in quicksand. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Megan, I, I want to know. Megan, can you look up where, where, where can we get some quicksand? I feel like quicksand was portrayed and portrayed in so many different movies. Like when we were yeah. kids growing up, like, I mean, most famously, you know, like well, there was the, there's the scene in the never ending story, of course, where the, where the horse sinks. That's, that was awful. Cause that apparently yeah. that horse really died. Uh, you guys know that, right? That, what? that horse, that, that horse actor, <laughs> that horse, <What? laughs> that horse in that, in that real scene actually died. No, yeah, like, they couldn't get it out. They couldn't retrieve it. Yeah. 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 Look it up, Megan. Um, Please God. I hope that's not the, they're like, they're like, okay. And cut. Uh, great job. Let's get the horse. And, uh, uh... Did, did you say get, did you say get the horse? No, 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 no. Oh, son, you wanted two takes of the horse. Okay. All right. But this was your because horse. There's no. Oh, no. That is so <laughs> All right. sad. And the whole point of the, the scene, right, was that that the horse didn't believe anymore. And 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 the kids begged. Wait, oh, no. hold on. I'm, I'm kids... seeing online that it, that's uh, that's uh, not true. Which I, I'm so glad uh, because I was, I'm so happy I was so that traumatized by that scene. Fake that. So Entertainment Weekly, if you believe that, says the horse didn't really die despite what's been said throughout the years. We had two identical white horses and it was shot over a few weeks, that that scene. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I was at an Entertainment Weekly party last night. I don't know if I trust those people. That's, uh, that sounds like a dead horse cover up. <laughs> And then, of course, there's the quicksand scene in The Princess Bride. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's right. In the fire swamp. In the fire swamp. Mm-hmm. In the fire swamp. Uh, I do believe there are I, other quicksand. Uh, I, there, there was like an obsession with quicksand. We were lots obsessed of car- with quicksand. Lots of cartoons, like Bugs Bunny cartoon kind mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just I mean, a lot we of, did a, We did a version stuff. of it this season in Sunny on, with the bog. That's we right. We did a version. Yeah. I was very happy about that, by the way. I was also very happy that I wasn't the person who had to do it. Uh, when we get to that episode, we should have Caitlin tell the story of of uh, of shooting that scene because her story of her experience of actually sinking in that in that in that mud was is so funny and it's so insane. messed up. Yeah, she she has done a lot of things for the sake physical things to her body for the sake of comedy, and uh, that is one of the more upsetting ones. Meg, uh, can you see uh, if God quicksand does exist somewhere on it, this yeah, planet? I, I was there people, for that. I was there for that shooter, and I asked her to go under. I was like. If you could, it'd be great if you could go under for one. And she did. But it wasn't even the, I don't even think that was the worst part of it. 
uh, it sounded like it was going up her pants and uh, it, like uh, bubbles yeah, yeah. were going up her pants. Yeah, and she yeah, thought yeah. that she thought she thought there were like little creatures crawling up her Ooh. pants, but it was just bubbles. And she didn't. She was like, she was like, but I don't she didn't want to stop the take because she was like, if I, you know, I don't want to ruin it. this. Yeah, yeah. Then you got to redo it. Then you got to redo it. And she's like, there. I think there's little creatures like crawling up inside my body Ooh. right now. And 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 but she was like, but we got to get this like that. Yeah, she's. A, I mean, like that. They're, kudos to her, man. Wait, so Meg, where's their where's their quicksand in this world? So quicksand really does exist, and it's w basically when sand is so small and fine, and it mixes with water. But what I'm seeing is that you can't really drown in it in the way that they portray in movies. It's not sucking you down into it. But quicksand is a phenomenon that can happen when water reduces the friction of like very fine sand. Now, if somebody were to give you a, a paralytic, you know, a, a paralytic, a paralyzing drug of some kind and, and pop you on some quicksand and just slowly let you sink, that's pretty fucking diabolical. <laughs> I think that would work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? What else do you want to do? And what else are what are your dreams? Well, this one this one I've actually gotten to do uh and I and I have to say I was very excited about it. Um <clears throat> the first time I've had to, I've gotten to do this a few times and uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played this game. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Uh okay, so the first time I got to do this was when I when I got my wisdom teeth taken out. Um, cause I'd never had any kind of surgery prior to that. And, you know, they were going to, the guy was like, okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put an IV in you and I'm going to have you count down from 20 or something like that. Or maybe it was 10. I don't remember. Um, and you know, then you're going to, you're going to go, you're going to go night, night. And I was like, Ooh, I've seen this in like James Bond movies where like they, you know, they give the, like the hero a drug and he's got to try to stay awake as long as he possibly can, because if he falls asleep, he's dead, you know? Uh, so I thought like, Ooh, I wonder how long, if I really, really put some effort into this, I wonder how long I can stay awake. Right. So he puts the needle in and I'm like, okay, here we go. Oof. 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you're out. I, have, I just I like the same I think exact I made it so thing happen to, like, where I did the same thing where I was like, I'm going to try and stay awake. I, I was like, what? <laughs> I asked the guy, like the anesthesiologist, how long has someone been able to stay? Like, what's the number that they so can get to? So you did this too. You I did the same exact thing. I've done it twice. And two different anesthesiologists. And, yeah, same. And, same. And bo both times, but more specifically, the first time, the guy was like, what do you mean? I'm like, what number? Do, do you think I can make it to <laughs> if I'm counting down? He goes, what number do you want to get to? And I said, I don't, I don't know, like six. He goes, all right, then I'll put you out on six. And I go, well, no, I mean, I, maybe I want to do four. No, and he's like, the he's like, then I'll put you out on four. And I'm like, no, no, I want to try and get there. You try to put me out on 10. He goes, buddy, if I try to put you out on 10, you'll go out on 10. I, you'll go out whenever I tell you to go out. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so I go 10. I know there are other things that are on that list and I actually think I, <laughs> I think I actually think I have that list somewhere. And the reason I have it is because, uh, I think I've maybe tried to pitch it, uh, for the show before where our characters actually want to experience these things that they, that they saw in eighties movies. Is get blown to safety. One of them. That's such yeah. a great eighties movie. thing. <laughs> Where like the explosion happens on you, and then you're like rocketed into like a, a like a body of water. Yeah, the rock is yeah. a famous one. Like uh, yeah, the rock where yeah. he where he's like ah, and he just like gets blown into water. It's like thank God that I got blown to safety. To be clear, that you're talking about the rock, the the Michael Bay joint, not the the Michael actor, Bay the movie, rock. not the actor. although I would say yeah, yeah. probably the actor, the rock, has also been blown to safety. In he's movie. probably been blown to safety a few times too. <laughs> I am. I can. Yeah. And if he hasn't, I'm sure it's in his next contract because he's like, when do I get to be blown to safety? Those are all the movies I grew up with because he grew up with the same movies we did. Yeah. He wants to be blown to safety, just like all of us do, um, you know, without somehow. I, I guess the trick to being blown to safety really is. A, how flexible is your spine? <laughs> right. Because you're going to you know what I mean? You're going to when it hits you. Ah, you get, you know, depending on if it's from the front or the back, but either way, your spine's going to go like that. Okay. So that's number one. Number two is what's your tolerance for shrapnel? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, you got to be, know, cause the shrapnel hopefully is blown around you, but not directly into you. 
Yeah, and yeah. Three, you get a couple pieces in you, but you. Is there something soft you can land into when you're blown to bits? That's right. right. Can, is there right? Is there a mattress truck going by just as you get? Yeah, blown? yeah. A truck full of chicken feathers, or like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like is there a, a, a swimming feathers. pool somewhere is ideal? And the explosion yeah, because you might, you might, you might be on fire, and the the pool will put you out, right? I mean, this yeah, is really I think that's the ideal whether or not scenario. your body can defy the laws of physics, because that is what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. In that in that yes, uh, yes, scenario, yes. you're you're surviving the well, I don't you're know. somehow it, surviving it, the concussive force that is so strong it can blow your body somewhere else, but isn't isn't decimating the, the flesh <laughs> on your uh, on your corpus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, on your corpus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that, did you, is that right? Is that, <laughs> no. a, did you use, use that word no. properly? No. All right, Glenn, what do you got? What do you got? One of them's just like getting chloroformed. Oh. You know, having somebody put the, oh, yeah. put a chloroform over. That's now that's something we could do. Well, that's propofol. That's something yeah, we could that, do. I mean, that, that's essentially propofol, isn't it? <laughs> like it's the, I don't know. How am I going to explain these expenses? To uh, that, <laughs> I, would be no, I would be concerned no. about the chloroform because there's a, there's a, a chance you, the well, person doesn't come come out, and then yeah, yeah. So you yeah, yeah. so the only way that works is if you chloroform yourself, because I don't want to be on the hook for that. I'm not going to be a part of this chloroforming yeah. each other. Uh, according to the movies, you got to pour it on the cloth, and you got to get it around the guy's mouth, and it ha you got to hold it there for a while. Like it doesn't happen instantly. You got to. You gotta, right. There's going to be some struggle right. first. That person has to have one a good inhale. <laughs> I'm glad you're saying he, he, he's going to struggle. It's a he on he you know what? chloroforming. You, yeah. You know what? You know, this is a he on he in my, in my mind. And, and you know in what? Megan, I'm way more, I'm way more glad. <laughs> it's good. It's good that it's, a, it's good that it's a man that I said in your he fantasy. Than you. It is good. It's good. Yeah. But it worries, yes, it worries me a little. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it, this this man this man doesn't have a mustache because the mustache. Gets I, but I like to believe I can so, count. You know. I, I can fight it off the way that I could not as not as well as I could fight off the <laughs> propofol, but I could fight off the chloroform. I think. I, I think we should find out how toxic it is, right? Like we don't want to do any permanent damage here. Uh, but uh, if if we're looking at a situation where it's not that bad. Uh, for you. Right. Uh, I'll do that. And, and I'll do that. It certainly if, sounds like a good time. If we find out that it's really not a huge deal <laughs> to knock someone out with a, 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 <laughs> no, a noxious uh, chemical gas, um, then I, I will do we'll that do where it. you try to chloroform me and I try to fight it off. <laughs> So all of our fantasies get to come yeah. true. I but get what to, does that mean? You try to fight I, it off. Do you get to physically try to fight Glenn yeah, off? Okay. Because that's a big part okay. of not being poor okay, for him. It's like, okay, the guy put the rag over my mouth. <laughs> I'm going to kick backwards, try to catch his nuts and scramble out of this really quick, you know, yeah. versus like, I'm going to try to not let the chemical. Yeah, fair. Uh, I, I would say we could start. We could start in a very specific position, which is which I have to let him get it to my face. And then no, from I there, think, Rob, I, if you really want to do this, we have to see that it's safe. And then we have to not let you know when Glenn's going to chloroform you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's, that's true. the real test. Is okay, you, you, if he starts doing it, yeah. can he do it quick enough to knock you out? You got, I got to be ready for it <laughs> at, at, any, at any time. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be a part of this. No, that's probably fair. That's probably fair. <laughs> I don't blame you. We, we we definitely shouldn't do it, but uh, but we should definitely research. Not only should we not do it, we shouldn't let people in general know that it's something that can or cannot be done, right? Like this is we're, we're you know, pulling from every... movies. We're pulling from from movies from the past, you know, thirty years. Yeah, but somebody out there is listening to our podcast, being like, "Wait, oh, really?" I, but are we really, look, look, look that, 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 that's like the, when you watch those commercials and there's somebody driving a truck off the top of a building and crashing it in the ground and then they have to put the, war the disclaimer underneath it. Do not attempt. I mean, is right. that where we are that's as a right. fucking culture that we just have to cater to every dumb dumb on the planet and be like, well, hey, just FYI, this isn't <laughs> real and you shouldn't do this. Fuck off. Like, where's the per where there's no no personal responsibility yeah. whatsoever. Get out of here. Yeah, but it is. But it is real. <laughs> We're talking about really doing it to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but to, we're not, but to suggest we're not fictionally doing it. But to, yeah, we're 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 talking about how well you can fight it and how well it works. You know, we're giving people ideas, here. right? And how much fun it is, to, and how much fun it is to perform that yeah, experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Well, we, so we should just suggest that we are professionals, right? And and like you should not try this at home because we yeah. are professionals. Leave it to the professionals, guys. I would like to, like, based on based on every movie I've ever seen in my entire life, I just want to watch somebody get knocked unconscious with one punch. That seems to happen in movies all the time. I've seen it in the UFC. I've seen it in professional fighters. Of course. But I've never seen that in person. And I've certainly never seen that like done to multiple people where, you know, like in a movie, you'll watch somebody, Jean-Claude Van Damme or fucking Steven Seagal, just knock out like eight guys in a row. And I've asked some of my UFC friends, some like real scary people who can fight, like, hey, how would you handle three guys? And the answer is always the same. Run as fast as you can. And those are like the, the toughest guys I, uh, like on the planet Earth. Well, I, you, you guys have all seen uh, those those great videos of uh, six foot five Steven Seagal, like just throwing little five foot dudes around around the room. Like that shit is so weird. Like I, it, it does look amazing. Like it and it, it like it, you know, and he just he looks like he's half asleep while he's doing it. He's just like. And the guy just goes flying and he's just like, <laughs> he's just like doing this. And they're just like all just like doing flips and falling all over the place. Like, and he's just like, he barely has his fucking <laughs> eyes open, you know, and he's just doing, just and, you know, that's, some, that's some shit. Like, yeah, just flailing his hands around. Like, I, I can't tell if that guy is completely fucking badass or just totally full of shit or some combination of the two. I really can't. I, cause, cause it looks good. You know what I mean? Like if any, if nothing else, he's a good dancer. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a cool looking. Well, there's dance a partner. famous story about Steven Seagal that, uh, in the, in the martial arts world where he was famous for beating up stunt guys <clears throat> and hurt, like hurting stunt guys, but not, not yeah. because the, the, the stunt guys are there to perform the stunts and you're supposed to do that in a safe manner. And he was very famous for, for like really like getting getting guys hurt. And so there's one stunt coordinator who is a legend in the martial arts world uh, who's named Gene LaBelle and that he was, uh, his nickname was Ju Judo Gene. Yeah. And there's a famous story where Judo Gene, where Steven says to Judo Gene, you, you could never choke me out because you could never get a hold of me. And he was like, well, I, I believe I, I could. And Steven's like, okay, well, let's see you try. And so St Steven goes after him and, and Judo Gene LaBelle chokes him out right in the middle of the set. And then he wakes up and then is like, well, that was bullshit. You know, you, you just, you can't do it again. And he did it again. And then while Steven Seagal was unconscious, he shit himself. And so he shit himself <laughs> and, and woke up. Now there are people who swear that they were there in the room and saw it and smelled it. <laughs> and it was very clear that Steven Seagal had, had shit himself while he was unconscious. I choose to believe that that happened. Yeah. I want to know what else is on Glenn's list. I, I, like, we've only been in quicksand and chloroform. What else you got? Yeah. The, the other one, the other one uh, is uh, cutting open a huge bag of cac cocaine and <laughs> testing it on your gums. <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, with like a knife. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I always yeah. found that interesting. Like, I, I'm my, the, here's here's how my brain works, right? Whenever I see that in a movie, you know, the guy, there's like a big, tightly packed thing of cocaine, and a guy takes a knife and he just and he cuts into it, and then he puts a little on the tip of the knife, you know, and he either snorts it or he <laughs> or he dips his finger in and, and he goes like that. First hands. of all, my first thought is like, my first thought is like. <sighs> Well, now that bag of cocaine, that's going to be a mess. There's a giant hole in that thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, fuck, now is somebody going to tape that up or something? Like, yeah, it's what? like, hey. I, I don't know why that, but that's where my mind here goes. bring I'm extra like, tape? I don't want this to spill everywhere. Well, you got to get into it. You got to get into it somehow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. If, if you really need to test it on the spot, uh, which, I mean, I think it's, if you've got just like a giant crate, and it's all filled with tightly packaged yeah. things of white powder. You know, you're, you're not, it's not baking soda. You know what I'm saying? It's not a fucking arm and hammer truck. It's a fucking cocaine. Okay. You, you probably don't need to taste it. It does yeah. feel like there were so many tropes, uh, like from growing up, like a uh, quicksand chloroform testing the cocaine on the gums that are they still in? Uh, there's so many movies now. I guess it's not the same for a kid growing up, right? Well, Where no, because like, now there's more, there's us, more uh, women making movies. So that that cha that changed a lot of things. Changed right. a lot of things. I, I got to do a movie thing actually 
um, because of Rob, I got to drive a tank over a car. Wait, like, wait, 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 what? So I was in Vegas with my husband. <clears throat> and we were go- doing a road trip and I texted Rob because I was like, oh, my God, my husband's taking me to this gun range. And because he wanted to shoot a bunch of World War II era guns because he's like a history nut and he just wanted to like test out some of these old machine guns and stuff. And I was like, this place is so wild. They have this like experience here where you can drive a tank over a car and then, uh, so I just like text him that. And then I was sitting there waiting for my husband's like appointment. And a guy comes out and he's like, is there a Megan around here? Cause somebody's on the phone <laughs> wanting to like get you this <laughs> tank experience. So he, he called them and like signed me up for it. And they put me in a tank and they have these like beater cars. And I got to like push the controls forward and like drive a tank over a car. And like it blew out all the windows. It was Awesome. It was like one of the coolest things I've ever done in my whole life. Wow. That if I if I'd thought of it, that definitely would have gone on my list. Well, well, what about from yeah, I think for me <clears throat> it wouldn't be a tank, but it would be um a monster truck. What was the what was the big monster truck when we were kids? Oh, yeah. There was the, there was one oh, cool. Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot. 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 Uh, man, imagine Bigfoot. driving Bigfoot over like yeah. oh, like a series of like 10 cars. Have you guys been to a monster truck rally? It's Hell super yeah. fun. Yeah, they are fun. It's loud it's as shit. Loud. My, I took my, I took my, uh, my oldest son to one when he was like three years old, and he, he did, he was too much for him. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of a lot for the kids. Yeah. Well, actually, once he had the, actually, once the he noise had the, canceling I thought thing. it was also cool. They, they sell gave, them like in the lobby. They, they had a, yeah, and they, they, they looked like big truck tires. It was kind oh, of cool. Fun. You know what I mean? It looked like that's a, fun. like a, and there was like a monster truck thing. Uh, once he put those on, he was, he was fine. It was, it was crazy crazy loud like he was he didn't he he was fucking scared man it was like you know and all these like people like yeah. like it was just it was very sensory intense overload. it was One very thing intense you, you you don't see yeah, as much overload. anymore uh and is is just straight on gratuitous sex scenes you don't see that as often where they'll just mm. take a break and this was just fully accepted and and beloved, uh, especially by, you know, 12, 13 year old boys yeah. who didn't have access to the Internet. Um, and there would just be a movie, action movie or whatever. And then three quarters of the way through it, it would just stop. And then you would just watch two people fuck in like a very sensual way that right. had nothing to do with the story and it didn't matter. And then they would then then they would just <laughs> move on with the movie. And you don't see that yeah. as often. I don't think. I feel like it's moved to no, HBO no. like series, like a lot of you know banging in HBO. Sure, but like series. if you, if you're talking about a show like Euphoria or or, or or shows that like revolve specifically around that, that being a part of the show as opposed to just ran just a random scene of well mm. now we're gonna mm-hmm. stop everything down to make love, <laughs> and then we're gonna yeah, and yeah, then we're gonna yeah, pick yeah, the story yeah. back. It, yeah, it seemed more out of out of the story. Yeah. Totally. That definitely seems like the the, the product of of men yeah. run, running Hollywood. Like that that's that is definitely a byproduct of that. I, like, I, I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but uh, I'm 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 glad that the even when I was at a young and, and you know more impressionable age, I found those scenes uncomfortable. I was like, I don't. Ugh. I don't know. I love. I loved it. It was like that was an opportunity because we didn't. Ha- well, we didn't have access to pornography, so it was like that was the closest thing you could ever see to like a woman's body in. And I don't know. And and then and then they would. I'm thinking of like Top Gun. Remember Top Gun? In fact, I think we did a parody of it on Sunny, where it was just like this movie about like yeah yeah with your we wife did, with, but with, with my fighter wife. jets. Yeah, that's the thing. See, that's the difference between old Hollywood and new Hollywood. We we do a, a love scene like that and we have Dennis in it and we cast your wife because we felt like that would be the most appropriate way to do it as opposed to just bringing in a, an act, a, an actor that totally. you would then have this wild, wildly needless, needless sex scene. But then also that. You- yeah, but are we better off as a society or or like, you know, are we not getting that out of our? Are we just fast and furious now? And would we have been Fast, Furious, and fucking? <laughs> but now we're just. But wait, does fa- do Fast and Furious? furious I, I don't see those movies. Do they have? Do they have sex scenes? They gotta have sex scenes in them, right? I don't think so. No, the eroticism <laughs> is handled by the, the 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 fastness and the furiousness of the, of the muscular <laughs> men that are performing the tasks that are are needed of them. 
You know what I mean? Like I, it, it's all it's all yeah. very sexual, by the way. It's just not in the way that it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> what was the what was the first movie you guys saw? What was the first movie? I can remember the very first pair of breasts that I had ever seen. And it was in a movie. Oh, boy, that's a good question. Right. No. What were the first? Was it Airplane? Uh, was it, was it, oh, was it that uh, might have been mine too. Was it no, but, it, but that was around the same that, time. That might have. That might have been one of my first, either that or Lethal Weapon, that first Lethal Weapon, one of those. Yeah. One of those. I, I, Megan, I think mine might be the same as yours. I think, although Airplane. weirdly, I think Airplane. I saw Airplane 2 before I saw Airplane 1. I don't know how that happened, but uh, Airplane 2 is also really, really funny. Uh, and they do the same gratuitous, like, uh, you know, women walking through the metal detector with, you know, completely nude. And then, like, you know, some dude comes through, like, some dude comes through, like, just armed to the teeth with, like, machine guns and shit. And he puts them through the thing. They let him through. And then they grab some some innocent old lady and throw her up against the wall and start frisking her. <laughs> or, like, po police, poli uh, well, at least that's part that of movie. a gag or oh, a police joke. Well, police, yeah, police, police Academy, academy. it's not, the, the joke is the cop who's the uh, a person of authority, doesn't he, like, pour something on the women's backs who are sunbathing and then they just get up? And expose themselves like I mean again we parodied th that whole kind of like ski movie slash yeah probably romp yeah, Porkies probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the first movie yeah. I ever saw oh, Revenge of the Nerds yeah. Revenge of the Nerds I Revenge think. of the Nerds was yeah. full nudity sure yeah, full yeah. and and rape and rape oh yeah. yes right. oh yeah. yeah yeah just a little bit non consensual sex uh, did you ever see the movie Just One of the Guys. That was the oh, first yeah, time. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, she, where it was she, a, it's a young woman. She, yeah, she tries, she tries to, pass to pass as a guy, guy right? And then her best friend, she's falling in love with her best friend who thinks that he this is his bud. And then slowly but surely, she, she then tells him, yeah. I'm a woman. And he says, no, you're not. That's impossible. <laughs> and then to prove it, she rips off her shirt. And my mind it's like, exploded. Yeah, she unwraps. Doesn't she unwrap? Didn't she have them? She did, up but for the moment of exposure, she just and, had her and, shirt and on and just like ripped it open. And I, I oh yeah. Jesus, like Hulk Hogan. And I was watching it with Bob Bateman, and we were like, rewind, rewind, pause, pause, pause. That was the thing, right? You had to pause <laughs> it. You had to pause it, and you had to get because yeah. sometimes the scan lines, you know, would be there like covering up, and you're like, ah, damn it! You <laughs> press play, pause it again, try to get those scan lines away from the boobies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh guys we got we got to end this because uh yeah. i i've got stuff to do i guys i've got a plan for today it's 11 30 what i'm gonna do is okay. i've got a plan to watch um to watch two movies today the my plan is to watch uh charlie your movie your amazon movie and then i'm gonna go watch jill's okay. documentary that's the plan for the day oh. yeah we're gonna go do that oh you sweet nice. sweet man that's gonna be, it's gonna enjoyable. be an enjoyable day that's that's that is going to be enjoyable. Those are they're they're both. I'll be. Very I'll, good let you know. um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Yeah, boobies and boobies in any of them. I take my boobies. I take my shirt off, so <laughs> okay. you can see you can see my soft oh, body. Okay, but there's no there's no there's no, no boobies. All right. Well, you have, <laughs> you have yours are boobies. Okay. <laughs>